All right. Hello, everybody. We are back with ES6, and uh, it's going to be me, EB, and Messin today. And um, we're going to be going through this challenge, and I'm going to hand it over to EB. She's uh, sharing her screen right now. So take it away, EB. Yeah. Hi, guys. Um, so we'll be doing ES6, uh, mutate and array declared with const. Ooh, that's fun. Huh, let me try to understand the logic. The const declaration has many use cases in modern JavaScript. Some developers <clears throat> uh, prefer to assign all their variables using const by default, unless they know they will need to reassign the value. Only in that case, they use let, okay. However, it is important to understand that objects, including arrays and functions assigned to a variable, uh, using const are still immutable. Using the const declaration only prevents reassignment of the variable, I'm sorry, I, variable identifier. Using strict uh, five, six, seven, s is reassigned to this. That don't make sense. Oh yeah, there was an error. So S2 equals 45 because this is a different variable key. Yeah, variable. Works just as it would with an array declare with var or let. Okay. Console S. Huh. Interesting. Okay. Returns 5, 6, 45. Yeah, you just update the uh, one two because of yeah. Uh, you update uh, the 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 value. <clears throat> right. So that's a nice workaround, and it's pretty easy too. You don't have to do let equals. All, I mean, let s equals or whatever. Yeah, well, when you use the bracket notation to find the index number, uh -huh. you're just updating it by that. As you can see, you can mute, mute, mutate the um, object 567 itself and the variable s will still point to the al altered array 5645. Like all arrays, the array elements in s are mutable, but because const was used, you cannot use the variable identifier s to point to a different array using the assignment operator. An array is declared as const s equals 572, change the array to 257 using various element assignments. Okay. s should equal 257. Okay, so my first Inkling is to remove this two and add the two in zero. Am I doing this whole push thing again? No, I'm not doing the pop or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I just look at the example. They did the bracket notation for the. Yeah, but this is invalid though. So, but what if I like did this yeah what how do you and what, what do they do here and then yeah they want the two to be first yeah let me see what they got uh, but s uh, inside the bracket zero means it. yeah that's going to create an array for the, the zero at the index yeah yeah but i want to also remove two yeah but yeah you're still creating an array you don't necessarily want to create an array i don't want to create an array is that what yeah. i'm doing right now yeah. just continue you're, like that you're creating yeah. a two array right and adding that yeah well, it's not adding it's just updating it's changing okay. the value updating it yeah yeah it's updating Huh. Okay. Put it in this format. I think it will. 
if you look in their example, they don't create another array. Oh, uh, they just well, create forty-five. Maybe, yeah, yeah. That too must be outside of the. I think it's okay, as long as it's a single. Uh, I'm just saying the the brackets around the two is not necessary. Yeah, that's what I'm talking. It's not yeah. necessary. Oh, yeah. that's what. Ah, uh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can do it, but it's not necessary. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so then. You just okay, need to so do the same second. for the others, the other index values. Now, like this? Yeah, the one, yeah. Wait, so I'm changing the whole thing then, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's what they want you to do. Oh, but. Yeah, it's, it's out about... of order. It's, a, it's out of uh they want you to sort it. So how do I do sort? I forgot to do sort. Yeah, there's probably a method you can access, but, but let me try this one. For the purposes of understanding understanding this challenge, yeah, that's what you did. What they wanted you to do. Yeah, the main the key point here. The key point here is, even if you you use const, mm. we can still update the values because right. normally const yeah. means we cannot. Uh, we cannot they're reassign. Read yeah, they're read only. Yeah, it's it's mut it's mutable even though it's a yeah a, a, a constant. It's you can mutate it. You know, it's changeable. Yeah. but you cannot use this s variable for something else. Yeah. Once it's already. I think it's just for arrays, though, unless I'm mistaken. Uh, we may want to console log that just to test it, just to see. What am I console logging? Yeah, because it's telling you you can't declare it again. Yeah. Say like you declared a constant. Well. No, no another another. Even constant. in the la even in the last situation, you could. You could still change a const because with the let i in the previous one that that was declared as a const, but then you it changed at the end when you consulted it. I don't know. I'm talking. I'm like verbally saying something that's oh, yeah. kind of abstract, so it's not very easy to like understand. But right. Um... But you just can't say. S equals something. Yeah. Can you try that one? Let's check. Yeah. Uh, what am I trying? S is equal to and give some some a different array or some. Yeah. I mean, free code camp is going to tell you it's invalid. Yeah. Because it's read only. Right. So when you say S is equal to, because this is equal to means it's uh, uh, it's an assignment operator, right? You are assigning value. Yeah, but if you if you like, now let me add three to there. Yeah. If you created a for loop, then oh, it said like I don't know. You can use also dot notation if you want. S dot. Yeah. Oh. S dot. No. S dot. S dot, then it should be S in the bracket, maybe in the bracket. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Because. Am I missing something? No, no, no. Just no, forget about this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nope. we'll see some more examples. Yeah, but yeah, I think I'll that's good enough for this one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was understandable ish. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna give this to you guys. <laughs> okay, Miss Finn, you wanna do a few challenges? Okay, let me try.
Can you see? Yeah. I think we're on the prevent object mutation here. <clears throat> prevent object mutation. As seen in the previous challenge, Quan's declaration alone doesn't really protect your data from mutation. To ensure your data doesn't change, JavaScript provides a function object.freeze to prevent data mutation. Once the object is frozen, you can no longer add, update, or delete properties from it. Any attempt to changing the object will be rejected without an error. Let obj, object or obj, okay. This is uh, an object and look at the property name, click on camp and another one review, awesome. Okay, object dot freeze is a JavaScript method. And inside that, we add this object. Now, object.review is equal to bad. Will be ignored, mutation not allowed. Now we are trying to update this object. Uh, yeah, this property. But uh, in this case, it will draw or ignore the change. And object.new prop is equal to test again it will be ignored mutation not allowed we cannot add any robots into the object console.log object so it only returns the original robots in this challenge you are going to use object freeze to prevent mathematical constants from changing you need to freeze the math const object so that no one is able to alter the value of pi. Add or delete properties. Okay. So we have this constant, math constant, and the value is 3.14. Now we need uh, this constant object to be freeze and that freeze no no we just we use object keyword dot freeze then inside we can pass this variable, which is maths, okay. And in this challenge, you are going to use this to prevent mathematical constants from changing. You need to freeze, okay, objects so that there's not able to alter. So I think we did that now. Change code above this line. Okay, yeah. So, what are we doing now? <clears throat> Let's try if anything. Object is not defined. Yeah, look at how they spelled object and how you spelled object. I don't think this is copter. No. Yeah, now run it again. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. yeah it's just critical that you name it. Okay. Yeah. The, uh, DOM. Well, it should be capital because it's, it's a JavaScript object. Anyway, what we did is we used the object. Yeah, hover over it. What was it saying? It's a constructor. Object constructor, constructor yeah. provides functionality common to all JavaScript objects. Provides functionality to yeah. So it's a uh, yeah yeah. It's a it's an object in JavaScript, mm -hmm. and we can use it to maybe yeah. add. Uh, it allows you to access that method freeze. Yeah. 
Hover sure. over freeze if it gives you any information on freeze. Yeah. Okay. So like a lot of math. Yeah. Oh. Read only. Yeah. It's telling you that it froze the pie. Yeah. And it's read only. We can the modification of existing property. What was it saying? Of okay. existing property attributes and values and prevents the addition of new properties. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because in the previous lessons, we could uh, mutate the array, like we can add more values to the array. But in this mm. case, if we use this object method, then that means we cannot uh, update or add any property into this object just because of this uh, object method. Mm -hmm. So try. Okay, Matt comes now is trying to update the value of that property by putting 99. And okay, catch, throw this example, return that one, and on. Okay, anyway, this is the cannot assign to read only. I will cannot assign this pie is already. Define somewhere uh, through an error, yeah. Conspire them. Had you changed it? Which one did you change anything? No, we just I only write this one. No, uh -huh. only that one cannot assign to it only property. Yeah, I just did only this, just I made a uh, this object mm -hmm. uh, to be freeze. So we use this predefined method like object dot freeze and we put the object as a parameter here. That means now we lock that object. Yeah, that's we go. Yeah, we can go ahead. <clears throat> All right. No. The coolest features of ES6. Yeah. Arrow functions now. Use arrow functions to write concise anonymous functions. In JavaScript, we often don't need to name our functions, especially when passing a function as an argument to another function. And instead, we create inline functions. We don't need to name those functions because we don't we do not reuse them anywhere. Yeah, because they don't have name, so we cannot use them anywhere, all right. To achieve this, we often use the following syntax. Const, okay, my function is a name of function and the function keyword. And const is a local variable and which is my var and with the value. Now we turn the uh, value of the variable. Okay, this is just a traditional, traditional way of defining a declaration of function. AS6 provides us with the syntactic sugar to not have to write anonymous functions this way. And instead you can use arrow functions function syntax const my function okay now the keyword function name is missing here okay equal to bracket arrow and that's it const the rest is almost similar only this line is different all right when there is no function body and only a return value, our function syntax allows you to omit the keyword return as well as the bracket surrounding the code. Okay, this helps simplify smaller functions into one line statements. Okay, so if we don't have anything like this, 
like no nothing inside the function so we can write simply like this const my function and instead of this curly bracket we just write the value straight okay this is the return value this is the whole function and this is the name of the function but this is only when we don't have there's no parameters and as well as there is no body inside the function in that case we can use simply like this this code will still return value by default all right so we write the function assign to the variable magic okay which returns a new date to use arrow function syntax also make sure nothing is defined using the keyword var okay so we need to rewrite so it is like this magic and something like this arrow I think we can use this if we want or since there is no nothing maybe we can we can just use uh, maybe this one syntax here unknown magic is read only cons magic we use our function syntax also make sure nothing is defined using uh, i don't know is it should it be like this yeah it's a duplication Just let's remove the whole thing. Function keyword was not used. Of course, why do we need to use that? okay so we, re we write the function assigned to the variable magic which returns a new date to use arrow function syntax also make sure nothing is defined using the keyword okay Okay, let's do like that. Magic should be constant, variable, but okay. Function keyword was not used. Okay, do we need to use? I would, um rewrite it within line one yeah i was thinking something like this but uh, i think we can uh yeah i think that's it but you, you the way you did it was right you just need to uh that console's being kind of it's just giving it an issue yeah. yeah it's saying it's saying was not used but you should not use it so you should use an arrow function if I use arrow function means I have to yeah type in the error yeah and then um, okay I think you can run it see what it says yeah it let yeah. you do that yeah mm. but yeah you could still technically um, yeah see see if it'll pass if you take out the return statement and the use strict in the brackets. Yeah this one we don't need that i think it will uh, to... 
Oh, just I can take this. If I write in one line. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, still it works. Yeah, so it took, you had yeah. five lines and it allowed you to simplify that to one line. Just one line. Using ES6. Yeah. Okay. But this works only if we don't have any parameters or anything inside the function. Yeah, as long as it's very simple yeah. return statement. Yeah. It's magic though. Yeah. <laughs> okay, write arrow functions with parameters. Just like a normal function, you can pass arguments into arrow functions. Okay, double input value and returns it. Const double item and that item times two. Okay, multiply by two. You can pass more than one argument into our functions as well. We write my concat function, which appends contents of R2 to R1, so that the function uses our functions in text. Okay. We write okay function which appends contents of okay test your code here mm -hmm. all right let's kill this again I remove this we don't need this Uh, but we have some parameter here. That's what function which append con. Oh, we don't need. Yeah. So. Mm hmm. I'd say just run it and see what it says. Oh, you need to put the parameters in there. Yeah, because I need something to put inside. But well, let's see. Yeah, nothing is passed. User digital e plus var. Uh huh. Okay, uh, something. User digital plus or should we plus? Is a t to the plus bar. That should be a constant variable. Okay, my con should be a function. Yeah, this returns the correct array. Function keyword was not used. All right, we will write this function which depends appends contents of R2 to. Yeah, so look at the console log my con, concat. So it has R1, comma, R2. Mm, you mean where? This one? Look at line five. Ah, here, okay. Read, read, that, read that function. So the parameters, how many parameters does it have? Uh, it has two parameters. Mm-hmm. With some and yeah. how many parameters did you put through the mic and cat? It should be two, so mm -hmm. it's like maybe a uh, two comma r one. Yeah, it should be two parameters because there are two variables. Two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they should be there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but I don't know if the order really matters, but... Uh, 
Yeah, it it passed anyway. Okay. Okay. So anyway, what happened is uh, we have two arrays. When you use this concat keyword, it will convert into string or what? Or is it just you no? Know, you see the output here. They become like. It, uh... I mean, you could console log the type of. Yeah. For. Uh, Can I do that? Yeah, sure. Type of. Object. This is an object, yeah. Well, R is an object also. Yeah. Yeah, so it's 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 in a a container of an object in the array. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, it's good to know about this. All right. I should go now. Maybe I'll come back if you're still around. Okay. What time do you think you'll be back? Uh in twenty minutes I'll be back. Okay. We'll we'll keep going and um Yeah. Maybe um you and I can go through the other ones later yeah. that you missed. Yeah, we can we can push a little bit today. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, okay. We'll catch you later, Miss Finn. Yes. And I'll I'll help you get caught up. Okay. All right. Later. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right, so we're doing. Shortly, I'll have to go. I'm trying to get to work early today because it's my last day, and I'm trying to be. Late. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How? How? Well, I'll talk with you after the recording, but. Okay. But how much more time do you think you have, Evie? Um, it's looking like maybe ten, fifteen minutes. Okay, let's go through this one, and then Messon and I can go through it later, too. Okay, okay. And if we can get through, maybe, how much more do we have for arrow functions? Hmm. We just have this one more for arrow functions. Hmm. And then we're getting into, this will continue arrow functions. Okay. Let's see if we can get at least through these two. Mm -hmm. All right. Write higher order arrow functions. It's time we see how powerful arrow functions are in processing data. Arrow functions work really well with higher order functions such as the map function, filter function, reduce function that take other functions as arguments for processing collections of data. Read the following code. All right, so it's going to function post. And then it's, fil it's filtering by function post. Okay, so it's taking Facebook posts and it's filtering them. when the thumbnail is something and their shares are greater than 100 and the likes are more than 500. So, yeah, there's returning really popular shares and likes with a thumbnail. We have written this with filter to at least make it somewhat readable. Now compare it to the following code, which uses arrow function syntax instead. So it's doing the same thing. So filter takes out the word function, it inserts this, and it takes out the word return and the brackets. And so everything is just 
nice and neat and returned immediately following the arrow mm -hmm. and everything is within a bracket or not a bracket but a parens so we reduced this 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 and this and it returned the same thing so it took it from four lines to two lines mm -hmm. this code is more succinct and accomplishes the same task with fewer lines of code use arrow function syntax to compute the square of only the positive integers decimal numbers are not integers in the array real number array and store the new array in the variable squared integers okay so we've got real number array so we want only the positive integers and so that's going to be four 42 six and that's it and store the new array in the variable squared integers all right so yeah we're going to store it in squared integers Okay. All right. Okay. Um, let's see. I need to define number. Oh, I need 
need to square it. I didn't do that. Hmm. This one's a doozy. Did you uh, get through this one? Evie? Nope. <laughs> I'm just watching you do your stuff. Okay, so not only do we need to get the four, 42 and the six, we need to square it. Oh, this one. So, and it needs to be an integer and positive. An integer and a positive. Right. Now multiplying it by. Um, and we, we can't, I was going to say, can we put it in like a, what is it called? A bracket or whatever? Darn, I forgot the math, math term to make it positive. The, I said real number A is greater, uh, or is greater than zero, but. Make number positive, making a variable value positive. Yeah, I have a script. The absolute, yeah, absolute numbers always, always uh, turn positive. Let me take this out and just see what it does. Okay, okay, so I've got it here. Okay. And I just need to say 16, 17, 6, 4, and 32. Um, Yeah, but it's giving me all the Yeah. Oh. It's giving me all the decimal ones too. Okay. I'm just gonna look this up. Yeah. Filter. Uh, numbers. Integers. Hopefully that turns something positive. Okay is integer that's what the number maybe i can get to something simpler let's just read about filter It's the CSS quality. I don't want CSS. Let's just go to that's for integers. I take out the CSS.
Uh, this is way too many results. Okay. Uh, SVG. Uh, so I can just say is integer. Oh, you need to define. Uh, let me see. How much more time do you have, EB? Gotta get going right now. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll just keep working on this one. Yeah, absolutely. I'll yeah. stop the recording real quick. Okay. Uh, we're going through this uh, this lesson on. Okay, let me get back to my window. Yeah, we're going back through this one. Uh, I can read through it again for you. Yeah. I think was this this might be the one that we left on. Is yeah. It not? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This one's kind of a booger. Uh, so I'm trying to figure it out, but. Um, yeah, okay. So write higher order fun error functions. It's time, it's time we see how powerful error functions are when processing data. Error functions work really well with higher order mm -hmm. functions such as map, filter, reduce that take other functions as arguments for processing collections of data. Read the following code. All right, so we got uh, the object Facebook wow. posts, and you're gonna filter the posts using a function. 
to return the post with that have a thumbnail and the post was shared more than a hundred times and it was liked more than 500 times. So we're filtering it to only like very popular posts. Yeah. Posts that have uh, thumbnails and with the, the share is more than 100. Yeah. And also more than 500 likes. Okay. Yeah. So you're weeding out a lot of posts doing that. We yeah. have written this with filter to at least make it somewhat readable. Yeah. Now compare it to the following code which uses arrow function syntax instead. So doing the same thing, accessing the Facebook post, filtering it by post, you took out the word function and use the arrow function and there's no brackets. So it just becomes the thumbnails, shares and likes in two lines. Okay. <clears throat> so that post is, is a kind of local variable. It's only a kind of variable inside that function. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, a parameter. Yeah, some kind of parameter variable. Okay. Yeah. The rest is nothing here. Yeah. So it's like return. Mm -hmm. After the arrow function is is the, the one we win we want to return. Yeah. After the, the, re the return is built in, so it's automatically returning. Yeah. Posts everything that, that meet these criteria. Yeah. Everything that fulfills that condition will be returned. Yeah. It'll be returned because yeah. of the filter uh, function and the error function saying return this. Yeah. With the filter. So like, we assign all this value into this post variable. Like if I have her with this, let me see if it gives me something. Uh, it's not returning anything to uh, Okay. This code is more succinct and accomplishes the same task with fewer lines of code. So the challenge is to use arrow function syntax to compute the square of only the positive integers. Decimal numbers are not integers. In the array, real number array and store the new array in the variable squared integers. Okay. So it began with only uh, this yeah it was just like that so it returns everything uh -huh. in the array so what what do we want to return uh compute we just want to return the four okay and square it so four times four but only the positive 16. ones and then 42 and six okay now the rest of the numbers it should ignore but 4, 42, and 6 should be squared, and then they should be returned. And that's what should happen. Okay. So this should be the output instead of this. It should just be 16 and 17, 64, and 36. Okay, so I wrote this. I wrote filter. And uh, this, where do you get this? The filter function. I just typed this in with the EB. So I created filter and then I did an arrow. Or, um, Maybe you better use a different name instead of using that array because we can use that array maybe as a testing. So put some kind of number instead of instead of real number array. Yeah, just use num or something, any number. Okay. What should I use? Just num number or num. Just and yeah, this okay. is now our local variable. And change also the next one. Okay. 
cards. But I have to declare. Uh, I think you don't have to. Because you see that post, it's just a variable. Yeah. Okay. Also change that one. Yeah. So that num should be greater than zero because it should be positive and is in Okay. So I mean that is integer is hard to find. Uh, so integer means yeah, num greater than zero and what are the conditions? Okay, so I got rid of squared integer should be square should be sixteen, seventeen, sixty-four. So everything passed except for Yeah, because square means something two numbers multiply three times that. Right? Okay, I'm just going to Google this. Let's see what the stack of that does. Can you go back to the code? Let's see. Uh, okay. If the item is a number type, then uh, can a decimal be? Uh, let's go back to the code. Yeah, so we needed to say that it's an integer. I looked up. I looked up something. To, to see whether or not I could do. You are, you are trying to check how we can like test I, I looked at MDN for the filter. Um, and I got the idea to use is, um, uh, okay, so I may need to create Create a function for is is integer. All right, I guess I don't have to. Uh, I think it's already okay. Just only now we need to square. Well, if it is greater than zero, I don't think it is okay because when you look at what it's returning because only the square is missing now it, but it's returning these decimal numbers i agree that the square is missing but it's also returning the decimal numbers i have to filter it to where it's only whole numbers But I'm trying to figure out what I need to use for that. Um, um, let's see. To number is integer yes let's see ah uh, okay so let's use that so let's say and number 
is integer. Uh -huh. I think yeah. you need to use this parse int to define. Oh, that's okay. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. We did it. All right. Awesome. Now we need to square it. I forgot how to square it there. Uh, MD and uh, wait. Uh, now you multiply num times nine. Should give square. Let's see. Yeah, I think you could just say num num times num. Num times num, yeah. Yeah, I don't know, there's too many uh, squared. Yeah, so just return num times num. And let's see what that does. Uh, one sec. Okay. Okay. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> Maybe the square integer is equal to num times num. That num is that equal to? Num times not make. Do you need semicolon? Saying that squared integer is read only. So it's the problem that we had <laughs> in the other thing. Like we can't we can't reassign this. Ah, yeah, yeah, it's const, it's const, yeah. Uh, so the only way I've seen how to do it is this. Right? But surely I won't have to do this for every single one of these. The only way I've seen how to change the, I'm sure there's a better way, but this is the only way I know. Uh, wait, one, oh, two. Surely there's well, gonna be. If you write just return num times num. I don't think this is gonna work, but let's see what it does. Yeah, it's saying num is not defined. It's only defined within the, uh, within here. You just write return num times num. Yeah. Let's see. I don't think it's gonna work because it's not defined. Okay, what would what, what do we get from this uh, squared integers? What will it will give us after a filter? What is can you console that? I guess we need to use another. We need to either use reduce or map. Uh, or... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, we need to use those one. Uh, I know it's stored in array. So array, let me console, well, console log it. Okay, so it's still this big, yeah. Okay, so it's not an array. It's nothing, because it's not defined. Let's see if it does anything. No, it's not gonna do anything, because we're gonna function. Mm. Maybe I need to do it here. No, that didn't work. Uh, yeah, we just got this final step. We've got it to. Yeah, maybe we could do that. Like after this is integer num dot, uh, you don't know, just continue there. Okay. Say and. Maybe no need to add uh, this end end. Just it doesn't like that syntax. How do? Ah uh, man. Can you remove this end end and ah? Uh, yeah, that's. It's still saying syntax error. Yeah. Uh, remove that space, yeah, a little bit. And may maybe semicolon at the end. Oh. So, semicolon after the, the bracket. I think it's still got an issue with this character. That this is not jiving. Mm. Maybe we need to square everything on the front end.
No. Let me look up how to do this. Uh, maybe I need to. Um, I have no hopes that this will work, but I'm saying that's not an integer. Not a function. Remove that end end, maybe just only dot. Yeah. It doesn't have to recognize something. We need dot 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 mat. Before that mat, yeah. And also that space, yes. Still saying squared integers is wrong. I don't know what these are. Let's see what I can find within the math. One moment, Miss. I'm gonna go check on something real quick. I'll be right back. I'm gonna pause the recording. All right, we're back. I'm looking up how to figure this out. So, uh, Okay, filter. Let's look up the reduce. Wait a minute. Uh, yeah, let's just look up reduce. <laughs> okay, so
Masson, are you back? Yeah, let's do it like kind of little homework. I think we're almost there, but just only, I'm not sure which one would do we need to use radius or map. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna continue to research it myself until okay. I figure it out. Yeah, I'll also. But yeah, we can come back later and. Okay. Do you want to do this uh, at the for me the the ten thirty p.m. session, or do you want to do it tomorrow at the morning session? Ten thirty, you mean today? Like a remote time or or a, not remote time. Uh, React time or JavaScript time? Yeah. We can try in the morning. Okay. Anyway, I'll try to figure it out, but I tomorrow we can meet in the morning. Like that, the uh, uh, React time. You want to look at it during React time? Yeah, I think I'll I'll try to figure it out, and you, if you also kind of get, ah. it, get it done, then we can discuss about it, and we will move on. Okay. Okay. All right, that sounds good. All right, everybody. We, uh, if you figured this out, then go ahead and place it in the comments. Um, you know, that would be a good place to place the solution. If you figure it out, um, put it in the YouTube comments. But uh, happy coding, everybody. Thanks for joining us.